Nothing is ever going to split us apart again. How far would you go to keep the love of your child? You wouldn't lie to your own daughter. You cannot ever tell Cassie. I want to know the whole truth, and I want to know it now. One life to live. They... Hey, Lord. The lady needs some help. We don't get many ladies here. In fact, we don't get any. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, hi. My name's Rebecca Lewis. I'm doing some volunteer work here at the prison. I was hoping you could help me. If anybody can, it's Powell here. He knows all about books. Powell? Powell Lord? Yeah, yes. I know who you are. I thought you said I had a visitor. Relax, Manning. She'll be here soon. Just remember, keep your hands to yourself. Oh, Nora. You look so happy there. Things really worked out for you, didn't they? I'll have to think of a special wedding present for you. What do you give the woman? who has everything. I have to say this quickly before Beau comes back. He was... I have listened to you. I, I thought about it, the, the right choice about surgery. There's only one choice. I understand that. I, I realize that. And I, I've done it. I've come to a decision. I know it's risky, but I'm going to go ahead and have a surgery. <laughs> may not bring my sight back. It may not even save my life, but... If there's a chance. Oh, you have to take it. Oh, oh God, I'm so relieved. <laughs> relieved about what? <laughs> Emily Haynes is pathological. Am I the only one who knows it? Has she fooled everybody else in this room? We were fooled, not anymore. It's all very clear now. Crystal clear. Dorian, the only way you could possibly have known about Emily's dreams of becoming a model is if you had given them to her. And that makes you and Claudia Carson one and the same. Face it, Dorian. It's over. You have been trapped. I don't have to listen to this. I'm leaving. No, you're not, Dorian. You're not going anywhere. Well, of course she's relieved. I mean, remember that little problem I told you that she was having with Kevin, you know, and it's, it's all poof, it's all gone, you know? So everything's uh, peachy now, isn't that right? That's great news, Rachel. Look, I knew that nephew of mine was gonna come around. <laughs> I knew it. So what was the problem, anyway? Uh, Bo. Oh, this, you know, private matter, sweetheart. She didn't even tell her own mother. Oh, okay, uh, well, okay, okay. I understand that, but if it ever happens again, you call me, all right? And I'll knock some sense into that young Kevin's head, because I want you two to be as happy as we are. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Mr. Buchanan, I hate to bother you. Yeah, Bob, what is it? <laughs> we have a slight glitch at the radio station. A slight glitch? Ah, why is it every time a sound engineer says that to me, a slight glitch is really a major problem? Uh, five minutes, I uh, promise. I just need to get your approval. Okay, four and a half tops, all right? Excuse me, No, ladies. no, four minutes. You got it, all right? And then we can celebrate. <laughs> Why didn't you tell them? It wasn't the right time. Oh, when is it going to be the right time? Before, after, or during the operation? I am not going to keep this from him forever. Wait, why didn't you tell him now? He loves you. What do you think? He's going to love you less because you're ill, or...? I just don't want to put him through any more hurt. Mom, you can't spare him any more than you could spare me. Now, Bo's entitled to know what's wrong and what you've decided to... Rachel! You're right. I'm just thinking of me. I'm being very selfish, aren't I? No, you're just being normal. 
You'd be crazy if this didn't scare you. Well, I must admit, I am a little shaky. But you're right. I will tell Bo. When? Soon. Today. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Come on. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been ready. Okay, okay. I'm ready to... Okay, okay. All right, okay. okay ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. Ta-da. Ta-da. Cassie. Cassie, Cassie, Cassie. You like it? I like it? <sighs> you are a genius. <laughs> you are a genius. You have taken this ugly, nothing of a room, and, and you've completely transformed it. Well, I went, I went neutral with the color scheme. That way we're covered Sweetheart, either way. There is, there's nothing neutral about this room. This, <laughs> this room, it just, it has, it has everything that a baby could want, from <laughs> soup to nuts, or from, just from the teddy bears to the diaper pails. <laughs> oh, yeah, speaking of diapers, you know, I really think that should be your department. <laughs> I was counting on you for cleanup. No, I'm kidding. We should share everything. Mm. <laughs> hey. Can you believe that there is going to be a little baby sleeping soundly in this crib? Mm. Soundly? <laughs> I can see us now. 2 a.m. feeding. Oh, we're exhausted, mm. happy. I'll tell you something, though. Babies, you know, they only cry till you put them in their mother's arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we're being a little ridiculous. <laughs> Who <Yes>. cares? <laughs> yes, but I love it. Oh, Andrew, I love this room. I love everything about our baby. You know, just think. I mean, it hasn't even been born yet, and it's already worked a miracle with my mother. She has certainly made her share of contributions in this room. Oh, it's not the things she's given us. It's how she's changed. Uh, if there's one good thing that's come out of all the problems Sloane's had to face is seeing my mother step in and try to help. Oh, this baby is going to have a loving grandmother, a terrific grandfather. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget the world's greatest mom. Huh? <laughs> one big happy family. You can't keep me here against my will. You're free to leave after you've heard exactly what I think of you. Elizabeth, you're a trustee of the university. You're not going to stand Be there. Be quiet, Dorian. I'm just waiting until General Carpenter finishes, and then it's my turn. I don't believe this. All of you are against me. With bloody good reason, Dorian. With good reason. I finally realize how morally bankrupt you are. You are not only trying to destroy me, you're willing to destroy Emily in the process. What you did to her was beyond cruelty. It was diabolical to manipulate an innocent young girl into something so explosive as sexual harassment. I don't have to listen to this. You just hold on there. Go on, Sloan. We're all listening. You are some piece of work. You even lied to your own daughter. Leave Cassie out of this. You never left Cassie out of it, not for a minute. Pretending to be concerned, coming to my defense. And she loved you for it. When you agreed not to print the story in your paper, her eyes were glowing with love. She believed, as most of us did, that you had changed. Well, you have changed. You're more dangerous than you ever were. Are you quite finished, General Carpenter? You and your high and mighty platitudes. You think that I'm cruel? You wrote the book, and I mean that in every possible way. I think you should quit. Shut up, Victoria. I have heard quite enough, thank you. Now it's my turn. I am going to tell this boring, bloated egomaniac exactly what I think of him and of all of you.
This is Fireman Bob, and I'm Fireman Sam. We got the smartest fire truck in the whole universe. Engine 5, Engine 5. That's Tonka's electronic talk and play fire truck, and it actually responds to what Sam's doing. Ladder up! Miss Buchanan talked about what had happened, but I, I just figured it was none of my business. Well, it was uh, definitely something serious. Something I'll have to live with for... Uh, well, anyway, um, is there something I can do for you? The, the, the guard here said you needed a book? Oh, no, I think he misunderstood. Actually, I'd like to leave some reading material here. Hmm. When you least expect it, somebody cares. Hmm. Well, it's not exactly my style, but uh, I'm sure some of the other inmates will appreciate it. Ms. Lewis? Oh, I'm ready. Well, um, thanks for putting them on display. Mm. Yeah, no problem. Uh, say hello to my cousin Joey. I will. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just talking to you makes me more convinced. <clears throat> of what? That not everyone here is a lost cause. You know, I was talking to this other prisoner here, and, and he's just so grateful to have a second chance. He's found the Lord. <clears throat> and... Oh, sorry. Well, good luck to you, pal. Yeah. So long, Rebecca. <laughs> Man, not... Hey, Todd, uh, my mom brought me some homemade cookies. You want one? You're welcome, Todd. So, who's here to visit you? An angel. Oh, Rebecca, what's her name? Lewis. I tell you, man, you know, she must have something else going for her. I mean, besides the good book. Uh, you got that look in your eyes. Short skirt, long legs, bodacious. Hey, 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 Zach, you watch your mouth. Hey, I'm for you, man. Whatever gets it done. So, how come she keeps coming to visit you to preach? She has the power of forgiveness. So, she's like giving you a second chance? Yeah. She believes that every soul is redeemable. Well, I've got some real estate in South Florida that I would love her to take a look at. Cut the joke, Zach. Rebecca Lewis is the best thing that ever happened to me. Todd, this is me you're talking to, remember? I know how you operate. And one thing you'll never do is put your faith in some teenage girl. Yeah? Why not? The Bible says and a child shall lead them. Lead you where? Out of here. And do you think you were hard to fool? You overblown, bombastic fraud? No, you were easy. Huh? General Sloan Carpenter, the great man, the great patriot. When you brush your teeth, the faucet plays God bless America. But all it took to bring you to your knees was one stupid, insipid little co-ed. Hey, I'm not stupid. You know, you were right about one thing. This girl couldn't spell cat if you spotted her the C in the T. And yet, I still almost got away with it. <laughs> That's how easy you were. Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of the fact that those two boys almost killed him in the alley? Oh, don't be sanctimonious. Spare me, Vicky. That was not my fault. No, I didn't want your boyfriend to get beaten up. Public humiliation was just fine with me. Thank you very much. I can't believe I ever listened to you. Well, then we're even. I can't believe that I was reduced to using a cipher like you. Elizabeth! Now, I hope that you still realize that General Carpenter should be barred from being the president of Landview University, and not because of some sexual harassment charges, but because he is a liar and a hypocrite. Oh, I know. Order the banner again? Oh, come on. This. This 
is not a book. This was a stab in the back. You came around behind me, pretending to be a friend, pretending to be family, and then you publicly accuse me of having murdered my husband. What am I supposed to do, say thank you, Sloan? You are out of control, and I think you better stop before this- Before what, Vicky? Before I incriminate myself? Everybody in this room has already convicted me. What more have I got to lose? The only thing that I care about in this whole town is my daughter's love. And this man, this assassin, turned my daughter against me and made my own child hate me. And I will never, never forgive you for that. Never. Have you considered what it will do to her and how she will react when she finds out what you've done now? Cassie can't find out. So please don't tell her. Um, Cassie can't ever know. Chase from MCI. We help create friends and family calling circles like this one. Hello, I'm Bob Grass from Matthew Romo. I'm Annette Bryant. I'm in Japan. Dennis, is that you? Mushy, mushy. Now speak English. Hello. Well, hello there. With friends around the world, the Grass family is getting the lowest price calls to Japan. We save about $69 annually with friends and family. I save $35. The Grass Friends and Family Circle 4 saves $190 a year. They get to call more now because they're saving so much Bo, Mom, you celebrate for me, okay? I, if I'm going to stay on that Dean's list, I've got a paper to finish. Rachel, I'm sure that paper can wait just no, a little while. No, when something has to be done, it has to be done. My mother taught me that. So I'm going to be upstairs, and you come and see me afterwards, OK? Don't work too hard. Uh, no. <laughs> just like her mother, motivated, driven to be all that she can be. Are you OK? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I know I was just thinking that I was wishing she was going to stay and join us. Oh, I'll let you know in a little secret. Right. I'm glad it's just the two of us. Excuse me. Uh, there were three of us, and we were going to sit in this table over here, but now there are only two of us, so can we sit in that table near the fireplace? Of course, Mr. Buchanan. All right, can you bring me a bottle of my uh, usual champagne? Sure. It's great. Oh, Thank no, you. Oh, no, come on. No. Hey, hey, you heard your daughter. You heard her. We owe it to her. It's our duty. To celebrate uh, for about her. This celebration. I think we should applaud these kids, but I also think that we should do something special for ourselves. Think about it. Rachel wouldn't be able to do it without her mother's guidance and her support. Isn't that right? Well, can I please I... try and tell you? Oh, yeah. Shall I do the honors, Mr. Buchanan? Yes, yes. Would you please? Okay, here's my idea. We give ourselves a special Christmas gift. On December 26th, we jump in a plane and we fly to the very tip top of Utah and we start skiing that deep powder. Uh, here, why not? I'll, I'll take care of that. Sure. Thanks a lot. What do you think of that suggestion? Can you imagine a mountain lodge, a roaring fire in a fireplace, skiing those black diamonds during the day? And then spending long, long nights under a goose down comforter. Stop it. Just stop it. There's something I have to tell you. It's very important, you know. Thank you, Victoria. Well, I knew that there was something dubious all along about that silly girl's accusations. Did you now, as I recall? You were very, very responsive to everything she said. Oh, but Victoria, given my position on the board, I have to protect the university's good name at all costs. Even if it means destroying the future president's good name. Oh, but General, you must understand that while I couldn't state it publicly, you had my 
my full support throughout this whole ordeal. I knew that you would be exonerated eventually, and I'm so proud. I, yes, General? Don't bother. I beg your pardon? Find a new president. After the way you and the Board of Trustees treated me, I'd rather be county dog catcher than president of Landview University. Sloan. I mean it. And you're lucky if I don't file suit. Oh, but, but, but you, you, you can't. I, um, I, I mean, we, we have, we have a, a commitment, an understanding. You heard what I said, and you have my word on it. Oh, please. Goodbye, Mrs. McNamara. No, no, please, don't, don't make a hasty decision. I'll, I'll hurry home, and I'll write an official memo. Elizabeth, you're not listening. I don't want an apology. And I certainly don't want a public report. But if, if, if we don't go public, no. then how is anyone to know what Dorian tried to do to you? Please, no public report. But yes. what? Yes. My daughter-in-law is about to have a baby. Cassie's health has not been all that good. We have to avoid emotional upsets. The last thing she needs is to find out how her mother has been lying. Mother, I, I'm I'm glad I'm here first. Mother, what is it? I, I, what's nobody called you? Did they? Please tell me that nobody called. Who? Who would have called me? Oh, thank goodness, it's not too late. Um, Mother, what is it? What is going on? Cassie, brace yourself. Better that you hear it from me. New garage door opener, huh? What kind of batteries you got in here? Duracell. That's what I use in everything. Really? No kidding. Mother, you're scaring me. What's the matter? Oh. <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> in fact, it's it's the very opposite. And so I've just heard some wonderful news. Please, sit down, because I want to be the very first to tell you. Tell me what? Come on, Mother, just say it. What? Sloan, he's been cleared of all those awful charges. No. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Oh, come on, I wouldn't joke about something so wonderful. Mother, this is more than wonderful. This is more than we could have possibly hoped for. How do you know? No one's called Andrew and me. Excuse me, you know your mother. I have sources all over this town. <laughs> um, one of them at the university called me just a little while ago. Oh, I am so happy for Sloan and you know, for Vicky, of course. And it's like this um, black cloud has been lifted. Yeah, but 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 how? I mean, did did Emily go back on her story? Or did they prove that she was lying? Come on, mother. Details, details. Come on. All right, I'll tell you. But, um, could I tell you everything over lunch? <laughs> I don't know why, honey. I was just... <laughs> Good news makes me hungry. I'm famished. And, uh, are you hungry? <laughs> why am I asking? You're always hungry. No, you know? no I'm not. I, I can't wait to find Andrew and tell him. And, and then I want to catch up with Vicky and Sloane and... No. <laughs> why, Mother? Because it just is impossible. Um... From well, what I understand, um, all of the principals have been sequestered in a uh, closed-door meeting at the university, and... Anyway, let's go to lunch, <laughs> and I'll fill you in on all of the details. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let me just get my purse, and then um, we'll get a quick bite in... Oh, my goodness. Mother, I can't wait to get see Sloane. I mean, and give him a kiss. This is just great. <laughs> this is great. on earth happened with Mrs. McNamara. She practically ran me down in the driveway. Thank you. Andrew, you should have heard your father. He was magnificent. We have some news for you. Good and bad. Hey, I'm hungry, and I bet you are too. Let's go get some pizza. 
<laughs> I mean, you don't mind being seen with me? I think my reputation can stand it. I don't know about yours, though, being seen with me. <laughs> I don't have a reputation. That's not true. I'm Emily the liar, Emily the pathetic little... Don't, don't. Dorian can call you any name in the book, and believe me, I've heard them all. But unless you let them stick, they just, they slip right off, okay? I wish that were true. Trust me, you can. Why does she do this to me? She was just using you as some, as some kind of weapon to get back at Sloane. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Wasn't me, I guess she just would have used somebody else. <sighs> that almost makes me feel worse, <laughs> like I'm totally insignificant. <sighs> God, I hate her, Marty. I didn't know you could hate anybody the way I hate Dorian Lord. Emily, listen to me. She is not worth hating, okay? I need a pizza fix. How do you feel about mushrooms? Only if they're poisonous. Stop it. <laughs> Can't believe this. You're telling me that everything that Dorian did to change Cassie's... <clears throat> General Carpenter, Mrs. Buchanan, there's something I have to say. Whatever it is sounds very serious. Nora, honey, I think the best way to say it is to just go ahead and just say it. Okay, okay, I'm here. So, whenever you're ready, you can, uh... Well, no, I'm, I'm... I'm just completely embarrassed and feel ridiculous. But... But what? Well, I... I... For a moment, I just... I felt this overwhelming need to tell you how much I love you and how important you were to me and how I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And that's it? That's... That was the important thing that's that you wanted to tell me? That's pretty important to me, mister, you know. Pretty important to me. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, Bobby Cannon. You see, why we get along so well, Red. Because you totally understand my true value. <laughs> <laughs> it's your modesty that I just, I love the uh, most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when, when I'm talking so much, you can't even interrupt for two seconds to tell me that you love me. You got it. Well, this mutual admiration, it goes two ways. I know you appreciate me. I definitely appreciate you. Oh, I'm the lucky one here. I am, and I'll never forget that. Mr. Lucky. That's me. So it's just nothing but blue skies and life's a bowl of cherries on the sunny side of the street. That's the way it's going to be from this moment on for us, kid. Isn't that right? Academy Award winner Kathy Bates invites you to discover the miracle of... General... <laughs> this is really hard. Uh, I don't know how I could have been so stupid. I was... I was all wrong. Um, you didn't harass me. You were just being nice to me. I mean, when I think about all the, the grief that I put you in, and, and, and you're, um... Emily. Please, I have to, I have to just say this really quick. <laughs> I'm going to start bawling. Um, I'm so ashamed, and I know you hate me, but I just want you to know how sorry I am for all the lies and the... Emily, Emily. No one hates you. I, I don't hate you. I'm sure Vicky doesn't. No, Emily. After what I did? Honey, you don't know Dorian the way we do. 
I hate her. No. She's not worth it, remember? You have to forget about her. Yeah. Well, she's still gonna pay for what she did. Sloan deserves a party. No, a celebration. Mom, let's do it. Tonight, we'll have Wanda send over one of those big spreads and we'll invite everyone who stood by him during all this, all of his friends. Mom. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing come on, happened. Mother, come on. I know when something's wrong. <sighs> all right, Cassie. Um, I went to my doctor today to have a follow-up. Uh, after that lumpectomy for my breast cancer, and he said that... What? Come on, Mother, you can't leave it just like that. Have they found more of the cancer cells? Oh, no. No, 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 sweetheart, please, don't get upset. Um, no, I'm still 100% in remission. It's just he said that I was really stressed out and um, strongly recommended that I take a break, you know, get away. <gasps> oh, well, good for your doctor. <laughs> I've been saying the same thing. Hop on a plane, go to Portugal or Spain or South France. Come on, any of your favorite places. No, I couldn't. Not now <laughs> that you and I have finally figured out a way to get along with each other. That is... Unless you could come with me. Me? <laughs> me take a trip? Oh, it wouldn't have to be to Portugal. Just a little trip, you know, to a health spa. We could get massages and facials, and there'd be no blood pressure problems for you and no stress for me. Besides which, now that this whole dreadful mess with Sloan has been cleared up, you could get away, couldn't you? Well, um... I, um, I'd have to check with my obstetrician to make sure it's okay, but Andrew might not want me to go. Cassie, anyway. I need you with me. And besides which, the more I think about it, why don't we go right away? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you'd want to see me again. Are you kidding? No, I... I was thrilled when they told me that you were here. Really? I mean, I thought after last time that I really touched a nerve when I talked about your parents. You did. But I'm glad that you did. I guess I wouldn't be here if... I came from what people call a happy home. And I think it was good for me to get some anger off my chest. I'm just sorry that I took it out on you. I mean, I didn't come from what you'd call a happy home either. In fact, I came from about half a dozen really unhappy homes. I know how the anger and the resentment can just build up inside of you until you just... Until you want to explode. Yes. You really do understand, don't you? There's someone who understands even better than I do. Oh, yeah, I know. No, I, uh, I haven't let the book that you gave me out of my sight. It's pretty good, isn't it? it sure is. Sometimes, sometimes I just open it up to a page, any page, and it's like it's talking to me. I mean, to me. Well, I'm really glad it's been a comfort. Well, it's been more than that. And finding your picture, that was even better. My picture? Oh, come on. I mean, you must have known it was there. Where? You really don't know? When I opened the Bible that you gave me, your picture fell out. Oh, Todd, I, I'm sorry. I must have put it in there and forgotten about it. I, no, 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 no. Don't be sorry. I loved finding it. It's kind of like a sign that you and I were meant to be friends. Well, I, 
I hope it's not blasphemous for me to say this, but I don't need a sign to tell me that. I knew that you and I were going to be friends from the first time I met you. If there's anything you need, Todd, anything at all. There is. But, uh, I don't, I don't feel like I have the right to ask. Just because you're in prison doesn't mean that you're, you're not a human being. Of course you have the right. When I'm with you, I feel very human. Well, then, um, ask me. Whatever it is. Okay. It's a favor, Rebecca. A big favor. And I pray that you won't say no. Hi, Super Dave Osborne here, getting ready to roll across the country singing the praises of these great-looking Hager wrinkle-free cotton pants. You know the ones, 100% cotton, wrinkle-free, out of the dryer, no ironing. I'll be covering more than 25... Honey, we had a wonderful lunch, and uh, I'm so sorry you weren't there to join us. My goodness, you know, Bo is so proud of you. He's almost, he's more proud of you than I am for you making the Dean's list. You didn't tell him, did you? No. I couldn't find the words, and then when I did, I just couldn't Mom. get them out of my mouth. Mom, I know it's hard. But listen, you have to find a way. You, your feelings, your needs. You need Bo to understand what's happening. You need him to lean on. You just need Bo. I know, I know, I know. Then stop protecting him. Now you listen to me. This is your life we're talking about here, and that includes your life with Bo. So you go home and you tell him about the operation. What else can you do? This favor that I'm going to ask you is something that only you can do. Me? Rebecca, look, I know I haven't known you a long time, but I can tell that you're someone that I can trust. Maybe the only person. There comes a time in a man's life when, well, when he has to choose between good and evil, darkness and light. And with your help, I made that choice. And now, if you're still on my side... Of course I am. You're not alone, Todd. And even if I weren't here, God is still with you. Well, I know that. But just between you and me, I'm really glad that God sent you. favor you were going to ask. Okay, Todd. Just what do you think you're doing with her? It's getting very cold outside and you have to bundle up. <laughs> what would I do without you to look after me? You'd probably catch your death out there. No, somewhere. I don't mean keeping me warm, although I love the way you do that. <laughs> if you hadn't found out what would Dorian was up to, we'd never have been able to get her confess. Mm -hmm. I owe you so much. Mm -hmm. And I love you. I love you too. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to take all the credit for myself because it was definitely a combined effort. And I love the way you trained those baby blues on Dorian and let her have it. Yeah. Listen to me, are you quite sure you're all right now? Don't you think mm -hmm. you should go home mm -hmm. and rest? Well, I'll do that. I'll do it. But I have to go to the rectory. Andrew is more upset than I expected. Yeah, well, I know you two have to figure out what to say to Cassie and yeah. how to say it. I hope we can spare her the truth. 
At least until the baby is born. Yeah. Thank God you had the presence of mind to ask Elizabeth to keep it a secret. Mm. Well, we know Dorian won't say a word. <laughs> I think we can be pretty sure on that count, yes. Yeah. Do be careful, my oh, okay? oh. Please take care of yourself, all right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, I'm quite sure we've covered all the bases. God, I hope we have. Oh, uh, well, my, um, my next doctor's appointment isn't until next week, so I suppose if you wanted to go to a spa for a day or two... We could... Oh, no. Three or four days at least. <laughs> Mother, why is this so important to you? I just want to have time with you. You know, before the baby comes. Oh, Mother, you're talking as if the baby's going to come between us after it's born. No. Not the baby. What, then? Oh, it's just that I feel that, darling, you and I have been given a second chance to have a real mother-daughter relationship, and I don't want anything to happen to change that. Well, why should it? Come on, Mommy. You, you look really upset. What's wrong? I'm not upset, really. I'm... I'm anxious, you know? I'm... I'm anxious for the two of us to spend quality time together. <laughs> you know, to, to, to do things together, share things. All right, all right. Well, um, let's go find Andrew and tell him about this little trip and, and we can get me some clothes. No, honey. It. Let's just leave Andrew a note. <laughs> <laughs> and you only need a few things in a bag because we'll buy everything we want in a spa boutique. <laughs> <laughs> you really are in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> See, Emily, no one's looking at you. It's all in your heads. Let's just go in here and order two giant salads and dive in, okay? <laughs> Emily? On second thought, let's just stick to plan A and go get some pizza at Wanda's, all right? Look at her, Marty. Smiling, smug. I'm not gonna let her get away with what she did. Emily, don't start anything. I didn't start it. She started it. I'm just gonna finish it. Okay, let's go, Mother. You win. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, there's Emily Haynes. 